of Christ we proclaim one Lord. All who put on Christ are by faith restored, sharing new life, salvation's reward. In the name of Christ Jesus,
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My brothers and sisters, peace be with you. I want to welcome all of you to the Cathedral of Our Lady the Angels. This is a day of great joy for us and for the whole Universal Church. Bienvenidos todos a la Catedral de Nuestra Señora de Los Ángeles para esta ceremonia, un día de gran alegría para todos nosotros y para la Iglesia Universal. We give thanks to God as we extend our warm thanksgiving to the Holy Father, Pope Francis, for the gift of these new bishops to serve the family of God here in the Archdiocese of Los Angeles. We also thank Cardinal Designate Christopher Pierre, the Apostolic Nuncio to the United States. He is unable to be with us today. He expressed to me his regrets and his warm regards and prayers for all of us. Every ordination makes visible the deep apostolic bonds of communion that unites this local church of Los Angeles and every diocese on earth to the Bishop of Rome and successor of St. Peter. So we pray today in union with Pope Francis and with all the church in heaven and on earth. I want to recognize my coordinating, coordinating bishops, our auxiliary bishops, Jerry Wilkerson and Alex Aklan. We also want to acknowledge Karen Roger Mahoney and Karen Roy McElroy, my brother bishops, priests, deacons, religious women and men, and all the lay faithful. Thank you for your presence today. Special welcome to the families of the bishops elect and to all of you, my dear brothers and sisters. Now, let us begin our joyful celebration, acknowledging our sins and preparing ourselves to celebrate Second Mist. I confess, oh my God, you my brothers and sisters, that I have been sin, my thoughts and my words, what I have done, what I have done to you, through my fault, through my fault, through my most difficult fault, that I have asked the first and every day of your church, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, pray for me. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. O oh God, who out of the abundance of your untold grace alone choose to raise these priests, your servants, to the ministry of the high priesthood this day, grant that they may carry out worthily the office of bishop, and under your governors in all things, they may direct by word and example the people entrusted to their care. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Ruhu al-Sayyid al-Rabbi alayya, li'anna al-Rabba masahani li'ubashir al-masakin. أرسلني لأعصب منكسري القلب لأنادي للمسبين بالعتق وللمأسورين بالإطلاق لأنادي بسنة مقبولة للرب وبيوم انتقام لإلهنا لأعزي كل النائحين لأجعل لنائحي صهيون لأعطيهم جمالا عوضا عن الرماد ودهن فرح عوضا عن النوح ورداء تسبيح عوضا عن الروح اليائسة. The word of the Lord.
Lectura de la segunda carta del apóstol San Pablo a los Corintios. Hermanos, puesto que por la misericordia de Dios estamos encargados del ministerio de la predicación, no solo nos desfallecemos, sino que renunciamos a actuar en forma oculta y vergonzosa, a proceder con astucia o a falsear el mensaje de Dios. Solamente predicamos la verdad, y en esto consiste nuestra recomendación ante el juicio que hagan de nosotros en la presencia de Dios todos los hombres. Porque no nos predicamos a nosotros mismos, sino a Jesucristo, el Señor, y nos presentamos como servidores de ustedes por Jesús. Pues el mismo Dios que dijo, brille la luz en medio de las tinieblas, es el que ha hecho brillar su luz en nuestro, nuestros corazones para dar a conocer el resplandor de la gloria de Dios que se manifiesta en el rostro de Cristo. Pero llevamos este tesoro en vasijas de barro para que se vea que esta fuerza tan extraordinaria proviene de Dios y no de nosotros mismos. Palabra de Dios.
is my command, says the Lord. Love one another as I have loved you. Be with you. And with your A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. You. Jesus said to his disciples. As the Father loves me, so I also love you. Remain in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and remain in his love. I have told you this so that you, my joy may be in you and your joy might be complete. This is my commandment. Love one another as I love you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I no longer call you slaves, because a slave does not know what his master is doing. I have called you friends, because I have told you everything I have heard from my Father. It was not you who chose me, but I who chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit that will remain, so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. This I command you, love one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Remain seated for the Veni Creatus Spiritus. Excuse me, I meant to say please remain standing.
be seated. Most Reverend Father, the Holy Catholic Church, our mother, asks you to ordain these priests, Monsignor Albert Bahuth, Father Matthew Elshoff, Father Brian Nunes, Father Slavomir Skredka, to the responsibility of the Episcopate. Have you a mandate from the Apostolic See? We have. Very be read. Francis, Bishop, Servant of the Servants of God, to our beloved son, Albert Bahuth, from the clergy of the Metropolitan Archdiocese of Los Angeles, until now pastor there of Holy Family Parish in South Pasadena, appointed auxiliary of the same archdiocese, and named titular Bishop of Vadesi, greetings and apostolic blessings the one who remains in Christ's fold as though in the Ark of Salvation, namely the Catholic Church can find the living Lord and also is called to the Supper of the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world in order that access to the saving truth might come to pass ever more effectively for the faithful in the community of Los Angeles its Metropolitan Archbishop, our venerable brother, Jose Horacio Gomez, owing to the great number of pastoral needs, not long ago requested from the Holy See another auxiliary bishop. Consequently, favorable as we are to this petition, it is our desire to assign a suitable man to carry out this office. Indeed, we turn our thoughts to you, beloved son, whom we have come to know as someone endowed with prudence, fidelity towards Mother Church, as well as other human and priestly virtues. Therefore, in consideration of these things and accepting the opinion of the dicastery for bishops, from our apostolic authority, we name and we appoint you Auxiliary of the Archdiocese of Los Angeles, the same time assigning you to the titular see of Vadesi, while granting to you all the rights and imposing the obligations which belong to this mandate according to the norms of the Code of Canon Law, provided that the liturgical laws are observed, we permit you to receive Episcopal ordination from any Catholic bishop anywhere outside the city of Rome However, prior to this, you must duly make the profession of faith and take the oath of fidelity toward us and our successors in this see. Together with the prayerful intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary and that of Saint Joseph, we implore for you the light of the Holy Spirit and likewise, we exhort you to carry out the preaching of the gospel zealously in harmony with your Archbishop given at Rome at St. John Lateran on the 18th day of the month of July in the year of the Lord, 2023, the 11th of our pontificate, Francis. Francis, Bishop, Servant of the Servants of God. To our beloved son, Matthew Elshoff, a member of the Order of Friars Minor Capuchin, and now pastor of St. Lawrence of Brindisi Parish in Los Angeles, appointed auxiliary of the Metropolitan Archdiocese of Los Angeles, and named titular bishop of Lamzella, greetings and apostolic blessing. The Holy See placed on the mountain, namely the Church of Christ, built on the Apostle Peter, who has given it such a great strength and solidity that it is a secure rock embraces with maternal arms through the ministry of the bishops, all her children, especially those who sincerely seek in her eternal salvation. 
Aware of this, our venerable brother Jose Horacio Gomez, Metropolitan Archbishop of Los Angeles, carefully examined the pastoral needs of this community, not long ago requested from the Apostolic See another auxiliary bishop. And so, beloved son, the integrity of your life and conduct, as well as other praiseworthy qualities of goodness and virtue, all of which faithfully commend you to us, providing a fitting testimony, lead us to commit to you this ministry of great importance. Therefore, upon careful consideration of the opinion of the dicastery for bishops and from our apostolic authority, we appoint you Auxiliary Bishop of the Archdiocese of Los Angeles and at the same time name you titular Bishop of Lamzella, granting to you all the rights and imposing the obligations which are connected to this office by the Code of Canon Law. As to your Episcopal consecration, we permit you to receive it from any Catholic bishop anywhere outside the city of Rome the liturgical norms being observed. However, prior to this, you must make the profession of faith and take the oath of fidelity toward us and our successors in the sea. Finally, beloved son, we earnestly beseech the Lord for you that together with the prayerful intercession of the Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and that of Saints Matthew the Apostle and Francis of Assisi, you may fulfill zealously and correctly in communion with your Archbishop, the ministry being entrusted to you for the spiritual good of the faithful. Given at Rome, at St. John Lateran, on the 18th day of the month of July, in the year of the Lord, 2023, the 11th of our pontificate, signed Francis. Francis, Bishop, Servant of the Servants of God, to our beloved son, Brian Nunes, from the clergy of the Metropolitan Archdiocese of Los Angeles and until now Vicar General there, appointed auxiliary of the same ecclesial community and elected titular Bishop of Kearney, greetings and apostolic blessing. In every age and time, under the guidance of the Holy Spirit, people flock to the Catholic Church brought into her through the door of baptism to gain eternal salvation there, so that this saving truth might ever more clearly be brought to the light among the faithful of the community of Los Angeles. Its Metropolitan Archbishop, our venerable brother Jose Horacio Gomez, not, on, not long ago requested from the Apostolic See another auxiliary bishop. Accordingly, well disposed as we are to such a request, we gladly concede his petition and appoint you, beloved son, to this office, inasmuch as you manifest prudence and spiritual life, practical experience, and also other human qualities and priestly virtues. Therefore, upon appropriate consultation with the dicastery for bishops, from the fullness of our apostolic authority, we appoint you Auxiliary Bishop of the Archdiocese of Los Angeles, and at the same time name you titular Bishop of the See of Kearney, granting to you all the rights and imposing the obligations which are lawfully connected to this mission. You may receive Episcopal ordination from any Catholic bishop anywhere outside the city of Rome the liturgical norms being observed. However, prior to this, as established by ecclesiastical law, you must duly make the profession of faith and take the oath of fidelity toward us and our successors in this see. We therefore exhort you, beloved son, to fulfill under the prayerful intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, this new responsibility of greater importance working in harmony with your Archbishop, and that you nourish the people of God by the administration of the Holy Sacraments and the preaching of the Gospel in accordance with the Magisterium of Mother Church. Given at Rome, at St. John Lateran, on the 18th day of the month of July, in the year of the Lord, 
2023, the 11th of our pontificate, signed Francis. Francis, Bishop, Servant of the Servants of God, to our beloved son, Swamovir Shkretka, from the clergy of the Metropolitan Archdiocese of Los Angeles, and until now, professor of theology there at St. John's Major Seminary in Camarillo, appointed auxiliary bishop of the same ecclesial community, and also promoted to the titular see of Vicos Tudis. Greetings and apostolic blessing. St. Jerome offered the following instruction. Read often, learn all that you can, let sleep overcome you, the sacred scripture still in your hands when your head falls. Let it be on the sacred page. In the light of this, meditating in every way on the words of Christ, suitable men distinguished by the Episcopal order together with the successor of Peter, carry out the serious and by no means easy ministry of evangelization, preaching the gospel and by its power confirming the brothers in their faith. Accordingly, when our venerable brother, Jose Horacio Gomez, Metropolitan Archbishop of Los Angeles, out of consideration for various circumstances and a great number of pastoral needs, made an urgent request that another auxiliary, be, uh, auxiliary bishop be provided for him. We, for our part, gladly granted this petition. For this reason, we are thinking of you, beloved son, who are outstanding in both human and Christian qualities, as well as priestly virtues, attributes which indeed allow us to entrust that responsibility to you. Therefore, upon consultation with the dicastery for bishops, by virtue of our apostolic authority, we appoint you auxiliary bishop of the Metropolitan Archdiocese of Los Angeles, assigning to you at the same time the titular see of Vicus Turis, while granting to you all the due rights and imposing the relative obligations in accordance with the laws of the Code of Canon Law. As to your Episcopal ordination, we by all means permit you to receive it from any Catholic bishop outside the city of Rome. <coughs> However, prior to this, as established by ecclesiastical law, you must first duly make the profession of faith and take the oath of fidelity toward us and our successors in this see. Finally, we exhort you to fulfill your office diligently indeed paternally and prudently, and of course in close collaboration with your Metropolitan Archbishop, each day entrusting yourself and your ministry to the protection of our most blessed mother, the Virgin Mary, and in like manner to that of Saint Joseph and Saints Faustina and John Paul II, so that they may earnestly implore you, for you an abundance of grace for a zealous Episcopal ministry in fulfillment of the words of the gospel. Do whatever he tells you. Given at Rome, at St. John Lateran, on the 18th day of the month of July, in the year of the Lord, 2023, the 11th of our pontificate. Signed, Francis.
I was checking that in the uh, documents, it was their name, and Los Angeles. <laughs> so we got it. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, a special joy for me to celebrate this Mass with you and to ordain our new bishops. Every Episcopal ordination brings us deep into the mystery of the Church, into the mystery of God's plan for the world and for our lives. Jesus Christ built his Catholic Church on the foundation of the Apostles, of his Apostles, to be the sign of his love and the instrument of which he makes the whole human race into his family, his kingdom on earth. And our lives are a part of this divine love story. Pope Francis said recently, this is the heart of the Christian faith. God, who is love, has drawn near to you, to me, to everyone, in his son Jesus. He wants to share, wants to share in your life, your work, your dreams, and your thirst for happiness. Love is the true meaning of our religion. Spreading that love to the ends of the earth is the Church's mission. Today, my dear bishop, Bishops-elect, the Lord consecrates you to lead in that mission. El amor de Dios y a los demás es la esencia y la misión de la Iglesia. Hoy, queridos hermanos, Dios los consagra para llevar esa misión a todo el mundo. St. Ignatius of Antioch was a bishop taught by the apostles as martyr as they were. And he said, one should look upon the bishop as upon the Lord himself. Brothers, you are called today to become the face of Christ, his presence among the people you serve. What a privilege. What a responsibility. But no bishop stands alone. Jesus says today that as the Father has loved him, so he loves you. You will walk with him in friendship as shepherds of souls and stewards of God's mystery. St. Paul reminds us today, we do not preach ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord. We preach his word, not our word. And as the prophet tells us, his word is good news to the poor and all those who are anxious and troubled. When Jesus preached, people were astonished and left everything to follow him. Why? Because for the first time, someone spoke to them of their dignity, told them that there was more to life, that they were born for greater things. Jesus loves us for who we are, and he meets us where we are. But he never leaves us there. He calls us to follow him, to put off our whole life and become children of God, to be holy as he is holy. His word born in people's hearts. He changed lives, he changed the world, and he can do it again. On Pentecost, the 11 apostles gathered in an upper room with the mother of Jesus. Another hundred or so men and women were with them. There were the few remaining disciples of a man who had died on the cross. They were hated and persecuted. Yet, from that upper room, their message went, went out to all the earth. This tiny remnant converted an empire and build a new civilization, not through politics or violence, but through love. The first, the first Christians love as they have been loved, living holy lives in the middle of the world as everyday saints. They drew life from the Eucharist and put out their own lives as an offering of love, just as Jesus taught them. They changed the world by believing in the gospel and challenging others to live it. They encouraged marriages 
and strengthen families. They taught children to love Jesus and walk in his way. My dear brothers, you are the successors of those apostles who preached the gospel to the whole world and made disciples of all nations. The love of Christ impelled them, and they did whatever Jesus told them. This is your ministry now. This is the mission we all share in the church, and you must lead us. Queridos hermanos, ustedes son los sucesores de los apóstoles que predicaron el Evangelio a todo el mundo. El amor a Jesús los, los impulse, los, el amor a Jesús los impulsó y ellos hicieron todo lo que Jesús les mandó. Ahora, esa es su misión. La misión que todos tenemos en la iglesia. Y ustedes nos tienen que dirigir para que se haga realidad. So, the task before us is urgent. Jesus does not want a single soul to be lost. So many today are like sheep without a shepherd, confused about life, searching for meaning, for happiness and love. How will they find Jesus if we do not proclaim him? We are called to play our part in this love story that God is writing in history. So let us proclaim his word boldly with courage and clarity, and above all, charity. So my dear brothers and sisters, let us continue to pray for our new bishops. May they lead us in the ways of Jesus. May Holy Mary, we know the apostles, be with them, and with all of us, all with Peter, with Jesus, through Mary. Queridos hermanos y hermanas, Sigamos rezando por nuestros nuevos obispos para que nos lleven a Jesús. Que María Santísima, Reina de los Apóstoles, siempre esté con ellos y con todos nosotros. Todos, muy unidos al Papa, vayamos a Jesús por María. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Dearly beloved, consider carefully the nature of the rank in the church to which our brothers are to be raised. Our Lord Jesus Christ, who was sent from the Father to redeem the human race, himself sent twelve apostles into the world. Filled with the power of the Holy Spirit, they were to preach the gospel. And gathering all peoples into one flock, they were to sanctify and govern them. In order that this ministry might remain until the end of time, the apostles, in turn, chose helpers for themselves. To the laying on of hands, they pass on to them the gift of the Holy Spirit that they themselves had received from Christ. In this way, the fullness of the sacrament of holy orders is conferred. Thus, the tradition handed down from the beginning to the unbroken succession of bishops is preserved from generation to generation. And the work of the Savior continues and grows even to our own times. Our Lord Jesus Christ, who is high priest forever, is himself present among you in the bishop surrounded by his priest. But through the ministry of the bishop, Christ himself never ceases to proclaim the gospel and to administer the sacraments of faith to those who believe. Through the fatherly office of the bishop, Christ himself adds and gathers new members to his body. Through the wisdom and prudence of the bishop, Christ himself leads you on your earthly pilgrimage toward eternal happiness. Gladly and gratefully, therefore, please receive our brothers whom we, as bishops, admit into our college, 
to the laying on of hands. Honor them as ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. To them have been instructed both the task of bearing witness to the truth of the gospel and the ministry of the Spirit and of justice. Remember the words that Christ spoke to the apostles. Whoever listens to you, listens to me. And whoever rejects you, rejects me. And whoever rejects me, rejects the one who sent me. And now, dear brothers, you have been chosen by the Lord. Consider that you have been taken from among the people and appointed to act on their behalf in those things that pertain to God. For the title of bishop signifies a task, not an honor. A bishop must try to benefit others rather than to lord it over them. But in keeping with the precept of the master, let the greater among you be as the younger, and the leader be as one who serves. Preach in season and out of season. Reprove with all patience and sound teaching. Whenever you pray and offer sacrifice for the people committed to your care, seek with zeal and devotion to obtain an abundance of grace for them from the fullness of Christ's holiness. In the church entrusted to you, be faithful stewards, moderators, and guardians of the mysteries of Christ. As those chosen by the Father to govern his family, be mindful always of the Good Shepherd, who knows his sheep and is known by them, and who did not hesitate to lay down his life for them. With the charity of a father and brother, love all those whom God places in your care, especially the priests and deacons, who are your co-workers in the ministry of Christ. But love also the poor and the weak, foreigners and strangers. Exhort the faithful to work with you in your apostolic labors. Do not refuse to listen willingly to them. Never tire of caring for those who are not yet gathered into the one fall of Christ, for they too are entrusted to you in the Lord. Never forget that you are joined to the College of Bishops in the Catholic Church, which is, which is unified by the bond of charity. And so, you should have a constant concern for all of the churches and gladly come to their aid of churches in need. Be watched, therefore, over the whole flock in which the Holy Spirit places you to govern the Church of God. In the name of the Father, whose image you represent in the Church, and in the name of His Son, Jesus Christ, whose office of teacher, priest, and shepherd, you will discharge. And in the name of the Holy Spirit, who enlivens the Church of Christ, and by His power, strengthen us in our way. The ancient rule of the Holy Fathers decrees that the one to be ordained bishop should be questioned in the presence of the people concerning his resolve to guard the faith and to discharge this office. Therefore, dear brothers, do you resolve to carry out until death, with the grace of the Holy Spirit, the office entrusted to us by the apostles, and to be passed on to you through the laying on of our hands? Do you resolve to proclaim the gospel of Christ faithfully and unfailingly? Do you resolve to guard the deposit of faith pure and entire, according to the tradition preserved always and everywhere in the church from the time of the apostles? Do you resolve to build up the body of Christ, his church, and to remain in her unity with the order of bishops under the authority of the successor of the blessed apostle Peter? Do you resolve to render obedience faithfully to the successor of the blessed Apostle Peter? I do. Do you resolve as a devoted father to encourage the holy people of God and to guide them in the way of salvation, together with the priests and deacons, your fellow ministers? I do. Do you resolve for the sake of the Lord's name 
to reach out in kindness and mercy to the poor, to strangers, and to all those in need? I do. Do you resolve, as a good shepherd, to seek out the sheep who stray and to gather them into the Lord's fold? I do. Finally, do you resolve to pray without ceasing to Almighty God for His holy people and to carry out the office of high priest without reproach? May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Let us stand. Let us pray, dearly beloved, that the loving kindness of Almighty God, providing for the welfare of the Church, we grant to these chosen ones an abundance of His grace. Let us kneel. Lord, have mercy. of Antioch, pray for us. St. Lauren, pray for us. St. Perpetua and St. Felicity, pray for us. St. Agnes, pray for us. St. Gregory, St. Augustine, pray for us. St. Athanasia, pray for us. St. Basil, pray for us. 
St. Martin. St. Benedict, St. Francis and St. Dominic, St. Francis Savior, St. John Vianney, St. Catherine of Siena, Saint Teresa of Jesus, Saint Albert the Great, Saint Finbar, Saint Bede, Saint Barbara. Saint Stanislaus, pray for us. Saint Thomas More, pray for us. Saint Martin de Porres, pray for us. Saint Pio Petrecino, pray for us. Saint Joseph of Leonessa. Saint Kateri, take God with us. Saint John Paul the Second. Saint Faustina. Saint Viviano. and women, saints of God, pray for us. Lord, be merciful. Lord, deliver us, we pray. From all evil. Lord, deliver us, we pray. From every sin. From everlasting death, Lord, deliver us, we pray. By your incarnation, Lord, deliver us, we pray. By your death and resurrection, Lord, deliver us, we pray. By the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, Be merciful to us sinners. Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Govern and protect your holy church. Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Keep the Pope and all the ordained and faithful servers to your church. Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Bless these chosen men. Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Bless and sanctify these chosen men. Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Bless, sanctify, and consecrate these chosen men. Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Bring all peoples together in peace and true harmony. Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Comfort all the troubled and the afflicted with your mercy. Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Strengthen us and keep us in your holy service. Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Jesus, Son of the living God, Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Christ, 
Graciously hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. Graciously hear our petitions, O Lord. And, uh, as you raise the horn of priestly grace over these your servants, pour out upon them the power of your blessing. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us stand. Where true faith is 
God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, Father of mercies and God of all consolation, who dwell on high and look upon the lowly, who know all things before they come to be. It is you who establish order in your church through your gracious word, who from the beginning predestined a righteous people born of Abraham, who instituted rules, rulers, and priests, 
I did not leave your sanctuary without ministry, who from the beginning of the world have been pleased to be glorified in those you have chosen. Now, pour forth upon these chosen ones the power that is from you, the governing spirit whom you gave to your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, and whom he gave to the holy apostles who established the church in each place as your sanctuary, to the glory and unfailing praise of your name. Grant, O Father, knower of all hearts, that these, your servants, whom you have chosen for the episcopate, may nourish your holy flock. I may, without reproach, exercise before you the high priesthood, serving you night and day, that they may unceasingly cause your face to shine upon us and offer the gifts of your holy church. Grant that by the strength of the spirit of the high priesthood, they may have authority to forgive sins according to your command, that they may apportion offices according to your precept, and loosen every bond according to the authority you gave the apostles. May they be pleasing to you in meekness and purity of heart, offering a sweet fragrance, fragrance to you. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, to whom glory and power and honor are yours, with the Holy Spirit in the Holy Church, both now and forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. May God, who has made you a sharing in the high, the high priesthood of Christ, himself put out upon you the oil of mystical anointing, and may you fruitful with an abundance of spiritual blessing. May God, who has made you a sharer in the high priesthood of Christ, 
himself put out upon you the oil of mystical anointing and made you fruitful with an abundance of spiritual blessing. May God, who has made you a share in the high priesthood of Christ, himself pour out upon you the oil of mystical anointing, and made you fruitful with an abundance of spiritual blessing. May God, who has made you a share in the high priesthood of Christ, himself put out upon you the oil of mystical anointing and make you fruitful with an abundance of spiritual blessing. Receive the gospel and preach the word of God with all patience and sound teaching. Receive the gospel and preach the word of God with all patience and sound teaching. <clears throat> Receive the gospel and preach the word of God with all patience and sound teaching. Receive the gospel 
and preach the Word of God with all patience and sound teaching. Receive this ring, the seal of fidelity, and adorn with undefiled faith. Preserve unblemished the bride of God, the Holy Church. Receive this ring, the seal of fidelity, and adorn with, the, with undefiled faith, preserve unblemished the bride of God, the Holy Church. Receive this ring, the seal of fidelity, and adorn with undefiled faith, Preserve unblemished the bride of God, the Holy Church. Preserve this ring, the seal of fidelity, and adore with undefiled faith. Preserve unblemished the bride of God, the Holy Church. Receive the mitre, and let the splendor of holiness shine in you, so that when the chief shepherd appears, you may marry to receive an unfading crown of glory. Receive the mitre, and let the splendor of holiness shine in you, so that when the chief shepherd appears, you may marry to receive an unfading crown of glory. Receive the mitre, and let the splendor of holiness shine in you, that when the sheep shepherd appears, you may marry to receive an unfading crown of glory. Receive the mitre, and let the splendor of holiness shine in you, that when the sheep shepherd appears, you may marry to receive an unfading crown of glory. Receive the crusher, the sign of the pastoral office, and keep watch over the whole flock in which the Holy Spirit has placed you as bishop to go govern the Church of God. Receive 
receive the crusher, the sign of the pastoral office, and keep watch over the whole flock in which the Holy Spirit has placed you as bishop to govern the Church of God. Receive the crosser, the sign of the pastoral office, and keep watch over the whole flock in which the Holy Spirit has placed you as bishop to govern the Church of God. Receive the crosser, the sign of the pastoral office, and keep watch over the whole flock in which the Holy Spirit has placed you as bishop to govern the Church of God. Let us stand.
Please be seated.
pray, my brothers and sisters, and my sacrifice and yours, may be accepted to God, the Almighty Father. May this oblation, O Lord, which we have presented for your church, and for this your servants, newly ordained as bishops, become an offering acceptable to you. And for the good of the flock, may those you have raised up among your people to be high priests, be endowed by your gift with apostolic virtues. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Lift the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is right and just our dear and our salvation always and everywhere. To you, thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, you made your only begotten Son, High Priest of the New and Eternal Covenant. And by your wonders, the Son were pleased to decree that his one priesthood should continue in the church. For Christ not only adorns with the royal priesthood the people he has made his own, but with a brother's kindness he also chooses men to become sharers in his sacred ministry through the laying on of hands. They are to renew in his name the sacrifice of human redemption, to set before your children the paschal banquet, to lead your holy people in charity, to nourish them with the word and strengthen them with the sacraments. As they give up their lives for you and for the salvation of the brothers and sisters, they strive to be conformed to the image of Christ himself and offer you a constant witness of faith and love. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as in exultation we acclaim. Most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition to Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world. Together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and me, your unworthy servant, my assistant bishops, and all those who hold into the truth and on the Catholic and Apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here, whose devotion and faith are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, 
Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that to your whole family, which, me, which we make to you. Also for these, your servants, Albert, Matthew, Brian, Slavomir, who you have been pleased to raise to the order of bishops. And in your mercy, keep safe your gifts in them, so that what they have received by divine commission, they may fulfill by divine assistance. Be pleased, O oh God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this suffering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven. To you, God, his Almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven, O Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants, and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angels to your altar on high. In the sight of your divine majesty, that all of us, who through this participation at the altar, receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, 
not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Llenos de alegría por ser hijos de Dios, sigamos confiadamente la oración que Cristo nos enseñó. Padre nuestro que estás en el cielo, santificado sea tu nombre. Venga a nosotros tu reino, hágase tu voluntad en la tierra como en el cielo. Con soy nuestro pan cada día, perdona nuestras ofensas, como también nosotros perdonamos a los que nos ofenden. No nos dejes caer en la tentación. Líbranos de todos los males, Señor, y concédenos la paz en nuestros días, para que ayudados por tu misericordia, vivamos siempre libres de pecado y protegidos de toda perturbación, mientras esperamos la gloriosa venida de nuestro Salvador Jesucristo. Sí. Señor Jesucristo, que dijiste a tus apóstoles, la paz les dejo, mi paz les doy. No tengas en cuenta nuestros pecados, sino la fe de tu iglesia. Y conforme a tu palabra, concede la paz y la unidad. Tú que vives y reinas por los siglos de los siglos. Amén. La paz del Señor esté siempre con ustedes. Dense fraternamente la paz.
Este es el Cordero de Dios que quita el pecado del mundo. Dichosos los invitados a la cena del Señor.
và ngài cứu chữa những ai dập nát tâm can
Let us pray. <laughs> By the power of this sacrament, O oh Lord, increase the gifts of your grace in this, your servants and bishops, that they may serve you worthily in the pastoral ministry and receive the eternal rewards of faithful stewards. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated.
As we come to the end of this Eucharistic celebration, where we have all been drawn into Jesus' thanksgiving to the Father, I would like to share words of gratitude on behalf of Bishops Albert, Brian, Matthew, and myself. The grace of Episcopal ordination is precisely a grace an unmerited gift of God's mercy. 
In response to this grace, we can only say, my soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. Our gratitude extends to God's church, the instrument of God's salvific grace. We thank our Holy Father, Pope Francis, who, in the name of the Lord, has called us to this new ministry. We thank our beloved Archbishop Jose Gomez, who has presided over this celebration. Archbishop, from the moment we received the news, you have been a source of support and encouragement. We are very much looking forward to working under your leadership. We express our gratitude to the cardinals and bishops who have prayed with us today. We also extend our thanks to the priests and the religious in a special way to the Capuchins, as well as the permanent deacons and their wives, the seminarians, all those who have dedicated their efforts towards planning this splendid liturgy. We appreciate the Catholic groups and organizations that are present here today, and we humbly thank the delegates from other denominations and religious traditions for joining us on this occasion. In a special way, we thank our families and friends. We love you, and we will always cherish and rely on your love and support. Yes, to our families. <laughs> Finally, we thank all the members of the people of God gathered here, and we humbly ask that you continue to pray for us. Pray that as we receive God's gifts, we may be generous in sharing God's gifts with all, especially with the poor and the needy. Que la Santísima Virgen María, Reina de los Ángeles, nos cubra con el manto de su protección. Que siempre recordemos sus palabras. No estoy yo aquí, que soy tu madre. So, first of all, we have four new bishops in the Archdiocese of Los Angeles, so we are very happy. <laughs> so, it is a moment of uh, uh, gratitude, as uh, uh, Bishop Swabik was saying, for uh, all the blessings of God for us in the Archdiocese of Los Angeles, and as he was saying also, thank you, Pope Francis, for giving us these new four bishops for the uh, apostolic needs of the Archdiocese. So thank you, all of you, for joining us this afternoon for this beautiful celebration. I know that this moment is a special moment of joy not only for our new bishops and their families, but for all of us here in the Archdiocese. So I also would like to thank the ordination committee who work for the work uh, who worked tirelessly to make our celebration possible. The cathedral staff and volunteers for the work these past two days. And especially thank you to the choir for leading us with this beautiful singing. <laughs> we also want to thank the altar service for the Queen of Angels Center for Priest Formation and St. John's Seminary. So,
So let's continue to pray for more vocations to the priesthood and in consecrated life. Let's pray for our new bishops, as well as all the bishops, priests, and deacons, and their wives. We need your prayers for our ministries. Uh, it's been a couple of months since we got the news, so finally we have the bishops, and now hopefully they're going to go to the regions and start working. <laughs> No, but seriously, let's keep praying for each one of them. Thank you for accepting the uh, call to be a, a, a bishop in the church. It was an interesting uh, phone call that you got some time ago, two, week, two months ago. And thank you for saying yes. And let's all of us commit ourselves to keep praying for them. So, please stand for the final blessing. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Amen. Amen. <laughs> it's a little longer, so wait a second. <laughs> May the Lord bless you and keep you, and as he has will to set you as high priest over his people, so may he make you happy in this present life and grant you a share in the happiness that is eternal. Amen. Amen. May God grant that the clergy and people he has chosen to unite by his gracious help be happily governed by his providence and your stewardship for many years to come. Amen. Amen. May they obey God's commandments, freed from adversity, and may they abound in all that is good, submitting in faith to your ministry, so that they will enjoy peace and tranquility in the present age, and with you to be found worthy to share the company of the citizens of eternity. Amen. Amen. You can accompany, giving the blessing for everybody. And may Almighty God bless all of you who are gathered here, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God.
joyful in the hope of Christ's coming, and by unity let your 